The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Hello, and help me welcome David Schoenfield. David. Carl. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm you're, doing fine, thanks. You were two terms as an alderman, and now you're running for the state representative. Yes, that's right. State rep uh, yeah. in the same ward that I served as alderman, which is Ward 3, the north end of Nashua, mm -hmm. pretty much from the river north. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was great to serve for the two terms in the Board of Aldermen and look forward to a chance to... Uh, work on some of the issues that the state is facing. They have a lot of issues. I think what's the ones, the prime ones that you're interested well, in? Well, the things that I'm interested in now, I think, are, are based on what I see going on around the country. You know, here it is uh, the day after the close of the Republican National Convention. Right. And last week we had Democrat National Convention. And we see such a stark contrast between these two parties. I'm a Republican mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, I stand for the things that Republicans stand for. And that's life and liberty. Um, for all, liberty and justice for all. It's um, uh, social responsibility to the extent that we don't crush our economy mm -hmm. um, and that we don't take away the freedoms and privileges that people are able to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a big movement now nationally to, at least with some of these Democrat controlled states and cities, to defund the police. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important that we support the police mm -hmm. and maintain safe communities. So safe communities, um, Making sure we don't go down the path of socialism, uh, I think, is a big mistake. Making sure we have liberty and justice for all. And I also want to see New Hampshire get an economic recovery going mm -hmm. in the wake of the COVID virus. I was talking to a friend of mine this morning who said that um, he was up in Laconia for the bike week up there. There weren't nearly as many people as there were in the past. He mm -hmm. went into a few places and he was harassed, They, he and his group of friends, for not having masks and not maintaining distance. And, and the end result was they left these restaurants. Um, mm -hmm. They had masks. Um, they were just being hassled for having too many people. Six people was too many people. Mm -hmm. So um, when we see some of the um, restrictions that are put on people, it's really putting restrictions on business mm -hmm. to expand. And I'd like to do everything we can in the state of New Hampshire to get through this and to get our economy flourishing again. Mm -hmm. And it was good beforehand. We were, had a great economy, a lot more yes. than we even planned on. Yes, we did. And I think revenues across the board mm -hmm. now are down. And mm -hmm. that, that's going to that's gonna be very difficult. We just saw, and we were talking about it a moment ago, that um, bad news in Nashua. Yeah. It looks like your tax rate could go up close to 5%, mm -hmm. uh, maybe more. Mm -hmm. and um, That was because of the pension plan. It's because of the pension plan. Mm -hmm. I noted that... Um, Alderman O'Brien, a former firefighter, <laughs> he said, we've been pushing for pension reform, you know, for so long. That was a quote in the paper, something along those lines. And he's a huge recipient right. <laughs> of a very big, fat pension. That's um, true. And, and he hasn't pushed for any kind of pension reform. And the problem we have with pensions here, of course, is... is it relates to this to the deficit in the pension plan, but it's, it's a guaranteed payout. Right. And, and if there's any kind of private pension plan mm -hmm. anymore mm -hmm. um it's a it's a guaranteed contribution right and that's what we should have too and that right. would be meaningful pension reform i'd love to see pension reform in this well, day we suffer a lot for this that's we're true. making payouts and i just saw that the reason for this new deficit in the pension plan is that they've revised their their um, income figures so their growth and their pension investments which by the way is in wall street mm. right our pensions are invested in Wall Street funds. Right. And so we want to see a Trump economy that gets the stock market going. We That's don't want to see a Biden economy because mm. if you think the 5% pension deficit is bad, it's going to be way worse in a Biden world where um, the stock market goes down more. And who makes up for that loss in the stock market? Taxpayers. That's the problem with our current pension. So they revised the projected income from my something like seven and three quarters percent down to six and three quarters percent, which is still very optimistic. Right. If I could invest at six and three quarters, I'd be very happy. I'd like to invest and be happy at four percent. Mm -hmm. um, my broker says, you know, we'll get you four percent on your money. That's pretty good. So here we're claiming we're going to get six and three quarters. That's probably not going to happen either. Plus the matter. This this goes way back. I don't know, even before you got into uh, the 
political situation here uh, in uh, before the year 2000 when they combined the local uh, pension plans with the state pension plan. Right. And the problem, the basic problem with it is that the state controls the investment, but the cities control the uh, payout. Right. So you can't have two people like that and, and, and balance it properly. Right. Uh, right now, the, the state wants to have uh, full funding on it. Mm -hmm. And the, the, that, can't, uh, that means that's why they're paying extra payments to catch up because it was only, uh, I think, 70% uh, uh, or 75% uh, payment. You know? Because you right. don't really have to uh, match it 100%. Uh, you're, you know, you're not going to go out of business. You're not going to go out of business. It, I don't think it has to be 100%. Right. I'd be, certainly be willing to consider something less than that. Mm -hmm. um, but the state is, is making these payments. Um, they're managing these funds. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the cities, I, I think, are being a little too loose with the money, that, yeah, um, the, in my personal view. Yeah, uh, a big part of this increase is due to salary increases. Right. And um, the firefighters were, um, they did not get their contract here in Nashua a few mm -hmm. weeks ago. And now there's talk of the civilian police unions getting their contract. And Mayor Donches, to his credit, he's saying, um, we have to be very careful with the budget. Mm -hmm. Now, he did say that he's not opposed to it. I think he should say he's opposed to it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the unions are his pals. So mm -hmm. he doesn't want to say that he's opposed, but he's issuing this caution. And frankly, the ones who are going to get stuck are the taxpayers. All right. Um, so, so that's something to worry about anyway. It is. I'd like to see some reform on the, during the, on, on that pension system. Well, that'd be good if you get up there. But uh, I, I've been, as I told you, four terms, and uh, they never could solve that problem because of the, the difference in the approach. We wanted to get into uh, the kind of pension plans that most companies have now. Mm-hmm or it's a defined uh, uh, contribution. Defined contribution, not a defined payout. Right. And right now we have a defined payout. Mm -hmm. So um, we're guaranteeing these pension recipients mm -hmm. um, an income that would be based on a booming stock market. Yeah. And um, it, just, it just isn't realistic. And like I say, the taxpayers are stuck holding the bag on this. Now, as important as pension funds is, you know, when you look at national news, there are some things going on across the country and, and largely Democrat-controlled cities and states, which I think we need to be somewhat concerned about. Mm -hmm. I would say uh, we got violence in Portland, Oregon, and mm -hmm. now Kenosha, Wisconsin. Right. Kenosha, Wisconsin, that's a, a city of 100,000 people. That's not, that's very slightly larger than the city of Nashua. Mm -hmm. That, I believe, is a Democrat-controlled city. Mm -hmm. Here, Nashua is very definitely a mm -hmm. Democrat-controlled city. I think we have maybe one or two Mm -hmm. Republicans sitting on any boards, um, any elected office, my wife being one of them, she's yeah. on the Board of Public Works, and, <laughs> and she holds the folks in the administration accountable um, for how they're spending the money and right. for providing good information to taxpayers. Um, so we have this, this violence, which seems to be um, not only tolerated, but in some cases, in my mind, encouraged mm -hmm. by the Democrat-run mm -hmm. cities and mm -hmm. states. Mm -hmm. And that's very bad. Again, we have a Democrat-controlled city here. And other than Governor Sununu, I mm -hmm. would say we have a Democrat-controlled state. We've got right. majority Democrat and House representatives here in the state, majority Democrat in the Senate. And I think that makes New Hampshire, and Nashville in particular, ripe for the kind of, of loss of control yeah. that we see in some of these other cities. And like I say, it's not just San Francisco and, you know, L.A. and Chicago. It's Kenosha, Wisconsin, which is a sleepy little town mm -hmm. in comparison mm -hmm. to those big cities. Nice little town, but a sleepy town. Like, well, it's, it's, it's just, rough now. It's certainly pretty rough now. I don't want to see us go that direction. So right. we need to stand up for safe communities and stand up for our police. I also don't want to see us going down the road of socialism. Mm -hmm. And again, we haven't heard that talk here yet, but I think the conditions, uh, especially Especially with the National Democrat Party, um, a large faction of it moving in that direction, and the demand seemed to be placed on all the local um, right. Democrats to follow suit. Um, it's it's an effort to either really go for socialism or to just hurt Trump and hurt Republicans. Mm -hmm. um, either way, um, it's going down a very bad path, and I want to make sure that that Nashua, I make sure that New Hampshire does not go down that path. Mm -hmm. So I want to keep our city safe, I want to stay away from socialism. And then there are some legitimate protests, certainly some legitimate protests about some very legitimate concerns but should that people be legal have. And, uh, not, I mean, there should not uh, be any kind of... Uh, it shouldn't be tactics. rioting. Yeah. It shouldn't be rioting. So I want to make sure that there's both liberty 
for all and justice for all. Mm -hmm. These things are very important. Um, liberty, I think, means that we have the right to make our own decisions. Right. Um, that kind of ties into how we're dealing with, with COVID-19. Mm -hmm. um, I think we need to make sure that we are able to exercise our responsibility as adults. Um, and then tying in, too, with economics, if we, if we make good decisions and gain something from our work and our investment, we should be allowed to keep that. Mm -hmm. Socialism would take that away. Mm -hmm. Socialism would dictate what you have to do, and it would take the profit that you make. Mm -hmm. And um, these things are to be avoided. We have um, a culture here in New Hampshire, live free or die. We have low taxes, um, certainly no so-called broad-based tax. Frankly, I think the broadest-based tax is property tax because everybody pays. Mm -hmm. um, and in, in a sense, income tax and sales tax are less broad because right. you only pay if you're making a certain amount of income. Um, but we want to stay away from any increases in tax like that, and we want to stay away from the social unrest. Well, how do you think that it's going to uh, go uh, in this election as far as our uh, our internal uh, uh, legislator, I guess the New Hampshire legislator? It's, a, it's the one where it's switched over quite heavy, Democrat. Yep. Uh, only two or oh, four years ago. Yes. Um, we have a history, you know, with our state house being as large as yeah. it is and, um, and being such a, such a prominent state really in the, in the nation, we tend to follow a lot what's going on nationally. Mm -hmm. And, and consequently, there, there can be some big swings left and right. right. Um, we've certainly seen that even in the, the time that I've been here, mm -hmm. uh, big swings from one party being in control to the other. Um, I think that the state of New Hampshire is ripe for a switch to conservative mm -hmm. because I think that New Hampshire people look around the country and they see how crazy some of these Democrat controlled yeah. cities are getting. Right. And if anyone tuned in to the conventions, we watched, oh boy. we've watched some of this. Mm -hmm. We don't watch TV, but we see it online. It was all available. It was, it was great. Um, you look at, at the, the difference between what the Democrats are offering and what the Republicans are offering. Mm -hmm. It's a huge, huge mm -hmm. difference. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think that, that people in New Hampshire are going to look at that and say, wait a second. I've been a Democrat, if mm -hmm. that's what they've been, but I'm not a socialist. Um, I've been a Democrat, but I don't approve of Mm -hmm. This violence. Mm -hmm. um, and then they see that Democrats tend to be approving of these things and certainly not speaking out against them. Um, and they say, well, you know, I've got to, in my 401k, mm -hmm. I need the economy to be mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. And someone might say, you know, I, I think that I'm going to vote Republican this time mm -hmm. because I don't want to see New Hampshire burn mm -hmm. like these other states and cities. We don't want to see that happen in Nashville. We don't want to see the stock market collapse. We want to have good jobs. Mm -hmm. We want to have... Um, Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Right. We have, we've had a good life mm -hmm. under these four years. Everything mm -hmm. was going great mm -hmm. until this, definitely, the COVID nineteen, the Chinese virus. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy Pelosi wants to call it the Trump virus. She oh, wants you to remember oh, that oh, it's Trump's fault oh, that, right. that we have this virus, yeah. but it's not. Of course, it, it came out of Wuhan, China, and I think it's perfectly legitimate to refer to it as a Chinese virus. We have the Hong Kong flu, right? Um, <laughs> these things happen. We have West Nile virus. You know these kinds of things. They're named for their origin, and, and it came out of China. So I think that's perfectly legitimate. But prior to that happening, we were booming. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. lowest um, minority unemployment figures right. since unemployment figures have been collected. That's huge. And um, more tax income than we anticipated. Right here in the state. Right. Yeah, that's right. Things are going great. And mm -hmm. I, I think that we stand at the threshold of two very, very different futures mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for New Hampshire and for this entire country. And I think most voters can look at that. If you look at the two conventions, you see a huge difference, tone, you know, dark, depressing, optimistic on the Republican side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, were it a nation to be celebrated, um, American people to be celebrated, um, ordinary American people on the Republican side, mm -hmm. and on the Democrat side, celebrities to be mm -hmm, celebrated, mm -hmm. and American greatness certainly not to be recognized. Right. Um, and it's a huge difference. So someone sitting at home at the kitchen table right here in Nashua or anywhere in the state, has, they have to ask themselves, what kind of future do I want? What do I want for my kids and my grandkids? Right. Do I want this doom and gloom? Do I want to head down the road to socialism? Um, 
which is disastrous anywhere you look in the world? Or do I want to stay on the road of optimism and economic recovery and a good life mm -hmm. and uh, a good future? Um, and I'm hoping that, that people will look at that and say, that's the direction I want to go. I did see one very interesting poll mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. I thought it, I thought it tell, told a lot. You know, we live in a day and age where um, we're in the cancel culture, right? Yeah, right. If you have an opinion that, <laughs> that you say, you know, gee, I, I used to like blue shirts, but I don't like blue shirts anymore. Well, you know, who knows what you're going to be accused of, yeah. you know, for not liking blue shirts anymore or whatever it might be, you know, right? Oh. Um, the kind of vegetable you like to eat, whatever it might be, something arbitrary can really, the repercussions can come down on you like a ton of bricks. Or so we live in a cancel culture and people tend to become more afraid to voice their opinions. Mm -hmm. um, rightly so, because someone in the media, look at that poor kid from Covington, oh, Kentucky. Yeah. You know, he wore a red hat mm -hmm. and someone got in his face and he was disparaged. Mm -hmm. All across the country. Right. He was canceled. He had a very good speech, by the way, in the yeah. Republican National Com uh, Convention. He did. He talked about being canceled. Yeah. And people are afraid of being canceled. So the poll I saw um, asked the question, do you have political opinions that you're afraid to share? And a majority of Republicans said yes. A majority of independents said yes. And a majority of Democrats said, no. said yes. Yes. Oh, well, they did. Too. They do. So. What okay. Democrat, what what opinion is a Democrat yeah. afraid to share? Yeah. I think Democrats are afraid to share an opinion that says, you know, Biden really needs to get out more. Yeah. Oh, you know, you can't say that. Or all lives matter. Uh -huh. Heaven forbid, right. right? So I think that there are there are even Democrats who are saying, you know what, I don't want to be canceled. Uh -huh. But these are my opinions. Yeah. And when I go to vote, yeah. I'm going to uh -huh. vote according to what I believe. Mm -hmm. And I think that we're going to see... Um, some some people doing a big wave maybe the unexpected well i wouldn't be surprised um you know nixon won really big and yeah. there were problems with his second administration obviously but i think that um it wouldn't surprise me if this was a bigger election than that well i i, I go back to 2010 when i uh, after my first term up there and coming out of a recession similar to what we're doing here with the virus and everything. And uh, having spent a lot of money, the budget uh, in 2008 to 2010 was high, mm -hmm. and uh, we were going to probably have the same budget. We had to look at it, and we had to say to ourselves up there in the legislation in 2011, uh, we can't afford that budget. It's a billion dollars too much. Wow, right. And we looked at what the income was planned, and it was a billion dollars less. So mm -hmm. how do we do it? Well, we said, this is what we have coming in. Mm -hmm. We plan our budgets. The Republicans did take a, a vast majority uh, mm -hmm. up there. And uh, they said, well, uh, we're going to live within that income. Mm -hmm. We're not going to write the budget from what we want right. and then try to figure out how to pay for it. We're going to say we live within the means. Right. We did. We didn't have any major problems with it, uh, and we handled it fairly well. But uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to do that this time. I just hope that people realize that's the way you should run a budget. That's the way you run your, your own budget. That's yep. the way you run in the companies. When If you're in a company, they yep. look at what the income is going to be. That's the first thing they look at. They don't look at what would we like to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice to look at what we'd like to do. Uh, it'd be nice. To, it's always nice to dream. But right, we have to stay. We have to stay grounded in reality. We mm -hmm. really must. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, um, revenues are down because of this virus. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that some of these things are going to be lifted because right. we're seeing that things aren't as serious mm -hmm. um, as once thought. And I think up front, when you're going into it. You don't know what's going to happen, so you got to take a, a careful, conservative, safe approach. But we've seen, um, I think, what's what's going on, and mm -hmm. it's not as bad a problem in my mind. It doesn't seem to be, and it's getting was, better. I mean, and it's right now, better. yeah. I yeah. mean, you're looking at it the last couple of weeks, and you have to look at it week by week, practically here. Right. Uh, but uh, it does look good, and mm -hmm. we'll see how it uh, at the end of the month uh, we'll be able to determine. Uh, right. you know, where we're going on some of these things. Right. So but, hopefully the revenues are going to come back as the yeah. economy opens up. But in the meantime, 
we may have to make some, we're going to have to make some adjustments because we can't just go back to the folks at home uh, like Nashua is probably going to have to do. I, I think it's terrible. They mm -hmm. need to cut their spending too. The city does. Um, but once again, it's, it's a single party system right now and they're a bunch of spenders and I, I think that they're going to spend. But we have to do that. If we, if we get elected on the state level, we have to make sure that we live within our means, um, see how much money we're going to get and then plan a budget according. I think that's Yeah, we can't just approach. go out and uh, spend, keep on spending some of this money. In fact, we have to try to get some of it back some way mm -hmm. and uh, you don't want to put it all on the, uh, on the taxpayers. I don't know how, you, the only way, you, you know, you build an economy and that is the first part of the engine, that the first cylinder, right. if you will, mm -hmm. <laughs> in your engine, mm -hmm. that's going to start giving money back. Right. That, and then if the economy goes, the people grow. Right. And the people grow, their business, the businesses they buy from grow. Right. So what's a, You know, I spoke a moment ago about my friend who went up to Laconia. Right. And um, they walked out of the restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, they walked out. And they decided they're going to you know, do something different. Uh, my friend said, um, yeah, I'm required to wear a mask, but I'm not required to eat here. Mm -hmm. So we go somewhere else. Um, a big part of the state revenue is rooms and meals tax. Mm -hmm. And so when, when he makes that decision to not Stay put up right with, with, yeah. with what he thinks is not necessary, mm -hmm. New Hampshire rooms and meals tax goes down. Mm -hmm. um, every transaction like that, and there are a lot of transactions like that. There were far fewer people at the Laconia Bike Week this year, he said, and a lot of people weren't going into these mm -hmm. bars and restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, so our revenue is down. We have to push through this, come up with really some common sense guidelines. And I think from the liberty standpoint, not that I'm a libertarian, I'm not a libertarian, but from a standpoint of thinking about personal liberty and responsibility, those who are afraid mm -hmm. and at risk should wear a mask. Mm -hmm. um, but to be afraid and to be at risk and then to demand that someone else wear a mask is wrong. Mm -hmm. um, I think we need to be self-responsible. We mm -hmm. need to say, you know, I'm willing to take my chances or I'm not. And if you're feeling sick or you don't want to take your chances, you don't go. Um, but if you do, you can go and you shouldn't have to wear a mask. Mm -hmm. So if we can take a little different approach, mm -hmm. um, and I understand there's politics involved. I mean, it's, it's a Republican governor who I think would like to do certain things, but he's faced with a Democrat um, executive mm -hmm. council, mm -hmm. a Democrat House, a Democrat Senate, and um, in an election year. And, you know, there's, there can be political suicide from, from, unfortunately, from doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to get past this. I certainly want to help Governor Sununu uh, with his agenda. I hope he can help me with mine. <laughs> We're up there and able to work together. That's what working together is all about. I've had the chance to speak with him numerous times, and, and I think he's great. Mm -hmm. um, I, I fully he's support him. He's a very him. reasonable person, too. Yes. I've uh, interviewed him just a couple of weeks ago. Great. And uh, he explained where he's coming from. I mm -hmm. think he's very logical. Good. And, and he's willing to talk to mm -hmm. you about it, which is uh, great, too, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. not all, all the people are willing to talk no no, uh, no try to get a democrat on this part on this uh com this uh type of tv interview just doesn't work really so, well uh, yeah um i think that they they see their safety in numbers and they don't want to speak for afraid they of being canceled discuss themselves or uh you know make an uh, go back and forth in an, a decision on how to uh, carry something out you know, mm. because that's the, the, the how you do it, how you work with the people is very important. Mm. And uh, they're ready to just come out with, well, what do they say? Thir a trillion dollar budget? Is that, mm. that that's what uh, the Democrats are saying they're going to have to ha have next year on the, on the federal level. Mm. They haven't come out with any numbers here on the uh, state level, but mm. they are all talking about an income tax and the tax here and the tax there on all the vote, all the uh, legislation that went through the Democratic legislature this year, uh, there were uh, uh, roughly the equivalent of 50 more vetoes. Mm. Uh, they, they put on one uh, Christmas tree bill, uh, 20 other bills that didn't have the full uh, evaluation by the committees. Mm. They tacked it on a Senate bill and they tried to pass that. The governor vetoed that. Yeah. 
and uh, I'm glad I'm glad he's vetoing those things. Well, um, yeah, it's the not first, a control. last uh, last year was 56, and this year th was the equivalent of 56 because uh, a lot of them were the same bill that was vetoed last time, almost yeah. exactly. Well, I don't know that the Democrats really want those things. I think they just want to make a show because mm -hmm. um, this is a presidential election year, and they they want to do everything they can to deliver the state of New Hampshire into Biden's column, right. and um, it's just it's a it's a tactic it's mm -hmm. a game and i think mm -hmm. it's an abuse of the new hampshire citizen and taxpayer for the democrats in the state to be playing those kinds of games and mm -hmm. that's i think exactly what they're doing they're not working towards solutions for the people at home um they're working just to get more from them and by the way these these extra taxes the the income tax mm -hmm. why do they love that so much other than it's just one more way that they can exercise control um one more liberty they can take away yeah you make the money but it's not yours to spend i'm taking some of that mm -hmm. and that's just wrong and so, you lose control how much they're taking you do lose control you will lose control. you look at your surrounding states that are in the income tax yeah uh look at connecticut look at jersey look at uh, new york mm -hmm. and how many people are leaving those states and that's right and we're getting some of the business that they that they can't they can't afford to stay in those states right Connecticut's another one. Well, people could be leaving New Hampshire, too, mm -hmm. and that's my fear. We have close proximity to Boston. Mm -hmm. uh, not that people are going down there, but people are fleeing there. But Boston is a place that could be a target for unrest, too. Mm -hmm. And we're not that far away. Mm -hmm. And these things you know, have a way of kind of metastasizing right. and spreading. And, and um, if some of this stuff starts occurring in Boston, it could easily overflow to here. Because it doesn't take much. It'll Kenosha, Wisconsin. Right. Had big trouble. David, I hate to say this, but we're running out of time. Carl, every anything? time I'm here or hosting a show or doing this with you, the time goes by very, very quickly. And that shows we're having a good time. And yeah. I hope the message gets out and that people have a chance to hear. Right. Do you need on. anything to help you in your campaign? Um, you I'm always some? glad to get feedback from, okay. from voters. Mm -hmm. uh, you can email me, david.shoneman mm -hmm. at gmail.com. Uh, you can... Um, I like sign locations, mm -hmm. so if you're in Ward 3 and okay. you'd like to stand up for uh, conservative principles um, and get a different legislature up there, please contact me. I'd be glad to get a sign in your yard, too. Good. Well, good luck. Thank you very much, Carl. Take care. Pleasure to be here. Thanks. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.